the Great Egyptian Museum was obviously a generic project in that it's a museum and it was branded because they obviously wanted the architecture to be iconic and to be emblematic of the function of the museum. And it was our first sort of real uh, parametric design. As such, it was an abstract process. The problem with museums is that they have content which is thematic, which needs to be arranged in a way that can be accessed through time or chronologically. So there's obviously a, an issue of how to divide up the, the content into three different epochs as such. And the problem with this project is that uh, they couldn't tell us at the time of the competition how much content to arrange per epoch or in certain times. So because we didn't know this, we had to arrange a system that was flexible and allowed for change, new discoveries. In Egypt, uh, they're discovering new finds and new ideas about Egyptology all the time. So to have a flexible vessel for this kind of information was quite uh, an exciting idea for us. What's interesting about Egyptology, as I said, is that they find new stuff all the time. And for, for us, the epistemology or the, the knowledge of the knowledge was as important as the knowledge. So it's almost like how every new discovery sheds new light on, on the history of, of, of Egypt. The great thing about this design is it seems to mediate the tension uh, that exists in museums between chronology and thematic content in that you could work vertically through themes across epochs or stay on the spiral and encounter those as, as you go through the epoch.